All right, so top fails using the hand of checkers. Uh, there's all kinds of areas you can mistake in this one. Oh, yes. And uh, you're going to learn from us, so you don't have to. All right, so number one, once you learn this, uh, I think it actually helps a lot in the future. Yeah, the mistake is not storing the little testing vials full of RODI water with RODI water. I mean, a lot of times there's some, you know, calcium type buildup or mineral type deposits that are left on them. So after rinsing them out, just fill them up with RODI. Yeah, so it often shows up kind of at the top of the ring. Mm. So if you take like a, like a little Mr. Chili feeding bottle or anything like that, and when you're done, just have that around wherever you're testing, squirt it in there, fill it up, and store it full, what you'll find is the vials actually stay really clean. They don't get that precipitate or buildup in there that can throw off the results. Number two, everybody hates those pouches. Yeah, so the mistake is not opening the uh, reagent pouches correctly. There's dotted lines on there showing you where to cut. And this, I've seen this debated on the forums and the, uh, in the Facebook groups and whatnot on how they cut it or how they get it out. Hannah's made it really easy. There's directions on the pouch. Yeah, for me, uh, the way I just do it is I'll tear, I'll tap it down, tear it off, and then peel it open on both edges so it just becomes like an open envelope, and then I can just pour it right in there. And for me, that is the easiest way. And don't get super hung up about every last like oh, uh, yeah. molecule of powder in there. Just get most of it in there, and you'll be okay. Number three, decide how much you care. Yeah, so the mistake is not deciding on whether or not you're a part per million or part per billion type of person. So does the ultra low range or the low range uh, matter to you? Yeah, and so if you really, really are chasing 0.03 phosphate, ultra low range is probably where <laughs> you want to go. If you're just trying to like make sure that I'm not going over like a, a few tenths mm -hmm. of a part per million, well, then maybe the uh, just simple low range is right. So figure out the level of accuracy that you need and you can get the right tool. They're both not that far away from each other, so it's hard to do catastrophically wrong, yeah. but there is a right tool for your specific job. Number four, there's a couple of tools everyone should have. Yeah, and the mistake is not owning the alkalinity checker and the phosphate checker. These are staples for all of us, or most of us here at BRS, and a heck of a lot of reefers out there just because of how easy they are. Yeah, easy is the most important part because a lot of people don't, don't check phosphate. Uh, it's hard to read at low levels mm -hmm. and uh, they just don't understand why they're doing it. And there's one distinct reason. Do it once a month because you need to match the amount of food you put in the tank to the type of filtration you have. If you're seeing your phosphate level rise every single month, either A, you're not doing enough water changes, B, you're dumping in too much food, or your general filtration just isn't working. So that once a month pulse on phosphate is going to be the pulse on am I polluting the tank continually or is my filtration and maintenance methods matching the tank so that I can have prolonged positive results. Making it easy to do is what the HANA phosphate checker will do because it'll read it right for you. It's really, really easy. Same thing with the alkalinity. Alkalinity, on the other hand, a lot of people test this daily. And so being able to test that daily, doing it really fast, and eventually you probably won't do it daily, but doing it weekly at least, giving you a pulse on the uptake of calcium and alkalinity is actually a pulse on the health of the organisms that are taking that in. So the more in tune you are with alkalinity, the more in tune you are with every living organism in the tank, at least those that uh, uptake calcium and alkalinity as part of their biological function. So really doing that is important, Making it easy is why you'll do it. Number five, sometimes you go beyond the range. Yeah, so the mistake here is not uh, considering diluting your alkalinity test to find out what your calcium reactor concentration was. And this is something that we learned doing testing a bunch of uh, calcium reactor solutions, flow and all this other things. If you want to know how much you're dosing your tank through your calcium reactor, uh, the alkalinity checker only goes so far and you can actually dilute it to, and then do the math afterwards to find out how strong your effluent is. Yeah, so uh, like just know that. You can just really easy, super easy to dilute it, cut it in half, and double the results. Number six, I think is actually having the right expectations from the tools. Yeah, so the mistake here is not having those right expectations for a little more you know, in-depth type tests, specifically the calcium and the nitrate checkers. Uh, they are some of the better tools that we have for these types of tests but it's you know the redundancy and it's the testing procedure and you know having the expectations of the results afterwards 
So attention to detail matters in this case. Yes. And there are a few more steps to, to this than you would do with your standard calcium or nitrate test kit. Uh, so here's the thing, you're getting the right tool for the right job. And in this case, if the right requirement is that I just don't know how to read the color, I don't mm -hmm. like it, I want a digital readout, this is definitely it. If uh, you happen to be colorblind, uh, obviously this is the right option. <laughs> so if you're getting the right tool for the right job, you understand why you're using it, uh, but know that they're a little bit more in depth than your standard test kit for the calcium and the nitrate. All right, so number seven, if you trust your heater or your controller's thermostat right out of the box, don't. And, the mis and that's the mistake is not uh, considering Hannah's thermometer to m verify those heaters and, and the control even the controller thermostat. So pulling the heater out of the box, setting it to 78, and expecting that it's going to be 78, wrong answer. Find out if it's go if it is 78. Use the Hannah thermometer. So I've seen them by off by as much as uh, six degrees. Two degrees is super common. Uh, some of the best options out there are actually calibratable, but you have to actually have something to calibrate too. In the past, for me, the most accurate option used to be that traceable like yep. pen. We still have that guy. It's pretty convenient. I actually still have one at home. Yeah. Uh, but around here, I will tell you that a vast majority of the reefers here use the HANA one just because probably it's less expensive, but they've actually found it to be more accurate. So maybe mm. I'm just being an old dog <laughs> in this case. I don't know. Uh, but I'd use either one. So it is less expensive and a way better option than just trusting your heater to be accurate. Number eight, you thought it was the most expensive, but you were wrong. Yeah, so when considering uh, alkalinity test kits, you, the mistake is not considering that the HANA checker could actually be the cheapest option, especially after you make the initial purchase and then buy reagents after that. So if you test uh, every uh, month, it is not. Uh, you'll never yep. find the end of that math. But if you do daily alkalinity testing, because you're uh, like a high-end reefer and you're really in tune with this, uh, reagent cost actually does build up in matter. So just note that uh, while the initial cost of the HANA alkalinity checker may be higher, over time it may actually be cheaper. Number nine, admittedly this is a little bit reef nerdy, but if you want uh, absolute performance out of your tools, this is how you do it. Yeah, the mistake is uh, not considering the ammonia checker from HANA if you have chloramines. Yeah, so a test for ammonia in uh, your water. So either just from uh, the RO or DI water, and you might think, well, I have DI rising, it's gonna take out everything. Well, no, uh, ammonia gas actually doesn't have a charge and it'll make it right through the DI resin mm. and actually pass right through the membrane uh, largely as well. So if you have uh, chloramines and specifically if you have uh, a difficult to deal with pH in your water that produces uh, the ammonia gas, well, uh, this is probably the best option. So test your water, we use in the checker and it'll tell you how much ammonia at you actually have in your water. You can test it in the wastewater, but actually in the product water is where it's best. Number 10, uh, this will save you from being frustrated day one. Yeah, there's nothing worse than uh, running out of reagent when you're in the middle of a test or not having enough. So the mistake is not getting extra reagent from the time you buy the checker in the first place. You'll end up replacing these depending on how frequently you test, but just having some extra around makes it a lot easier when you're down to the last. Yeah, so like with the phosphate checker, I think it comes with like 10, but I'm not buying a $50 tool to only test 10 times. So uh, go ahead and buy the little pack of 25 more. You'll use it and you'll be thankful that it's there. Number 11, there's a lot of solutions for this, but if you just don't already have one, pick this one. Yeah, the mistake is not getting a cleaning cloth or microfiber or something to clean the vials off. My procedure is to you know, cap the vial and dip it in RO water and then wipe it off with a cleaning cloth so there's no fingerprints, no residue on the outside. Makes the test just that more reliable. Yeah, number one receipt procedure out there is actually this. Shirt method. Uh, shirt method. Yeah, that's the wrong method. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so anything that gets on there, any smears or anything, can actually decrease the accuracy of the test. So if you want to pick up a few dollar cloth, you can actually increase the accuracy of the test. And most people are buying this because they want accuracy. So a few dollar cloth will help you achieve that. All right, so if there's only one thing you heard today, let it be this. If you're looking at the library of HANA products, do not skip the alkalinity and the phosphate checker. You'll be happy you did. Um, for me, oddly enough, uh, it isn't the checkers. It's actually that piece about the thermometer. Ah. Almost everybody out there just assumes that uh, 78 is 78 because I set it to that. It has a little number on it. 
it could be so far off from that. You can actually just check it with a, uh, you know, any old thermometer you have at your house, uh, you know, typically like a, a one you'd use for your kitchen, just to see maybe uh, is this off uh, and start there. But if it is and you're not comfortable with it, something like this is probably the like, least expensive option for getting something that you can trust. All right, so if you're interested in actually one specific one being the HANA alkalinity checker, we actually tested that against a bunch of other tests out there. Mm -hmm. And one of the most refreshing things is all of us got the exact same reading multiple times over and over and over again. You can see that experiment right here. It was super satisfying. But if you want to see the whole collection of all of the HANA products out there, you can find them right here.